Let's pray. Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all those who have kept to the faith, finished their races, and who now rest from their labors. We praise you for those dear to us who we name in our hearts before you. And especially we thank you today for Olivia, whom you have now received into your presence. Help us to believe what we have not seen, trusting you to lead us through our years. Bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your home. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. 
Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless them. Do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be faulty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And the second passage is Paul's chapter about God's gift of love to us and how we are called as disciples to share that love with one another. Now, though, although the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians is also oftentimes used in weddings, how right Olivia is that it is most appropriate at a celebration of life service. This is 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Olivia indeed understood the marks of a true Christian to speak quietly and carry a big heart. And she shared her love generously with others throughout her entire life. 
Now, she was born on a 40-acre farm in Rome, Georgia, way out there on the wayside road. Despite not having much money, she says that her childhood was a good one. She enjoyed playing with her brothers, enjoyed playing all kinds of sports, being involved in clubs and organizations. Her parents worked very, very hard, and they instilled that strong worth ethic in all of their children. Libby Nell, as she was known then, would tirelessly work in the family cotton fields and vegetable gardens. And then finally, when she got her first job, she would bring her paycheck home and give it to her mom. The entire thing. And then her mother, in turn, would give her an allowance out of her own paycheck. Now, some daughters might complain about this. Some may even become resentful, but not Libby Nail. To contribute to the needs of the saints was an honor for her. The mark of a true Christian. After graduating from North Georgia Business College, Nell, as she became known, Nell landed a good job as an admitting secretary at Batty State Hospital. And it was there that she met this lab assistant with dreams of becoming a medical doctor named David Gross. Now, sparks flew. And after about a two-year long-distance relationship, They happily were married. But it can't be said that it was happily ever after. Their first baby, a daughter named Angela Dawn, was born full term, but stillborn. I can only imagine their joy, Olivia and David's joy, when Chris was born healthy and then followed by Karen born healthy. And their family was complete. You know, Olivia leaned on her strong faith. She was patient in suffering. She did persevere in prayer and rejoiced in hope. There's another one of those true marks. And she relished this period of her life with her doctor husband busy working all hours of the ER. She was able to take full charge of her home. As a result, she learned to be independent. A spirit upon which she would have to draw years later. She loved being front and center in her children's lives. In every age and every stage, whether it was as a softball coach or president of the Parents Association or president of the Booster Club, Room mom, scorekeeper, dance mom, you know, name it, she was front and center for her children. She certainly did not lag in zeal as a godly mother. And not only was she involved in her own kids' lives, but she became involved in the kids who lived around her, friends and neighbors. There was always at least one extra kid in her home, or five or six. The family told me about their next-door neighbor, Helen, who was about a year older than Karen. And she considered Olivia's home to be her own. She wouldn't bother knocking. She'd just walk in, say hello, and go straight to the fridge for a snack. Now, the first time Roger witnessed this Helen walking in, what was now his and Olivia's home, he thought, what in the world is this random kid doing walking in my house? So he looks over at Olivia like, what? And she says, oh, that's just Helen. Extend hospitality to strangers. There's another one of those marks. When David died, Olivia was understandably devastated, but she knew that her first responsibility was to her children. And Carrie and Chris said that they appreciated so much her strength and her protectiveness, and even her humor. And it was those things that got them through. 
When a mishap occurred and the police escort didn't arrive in time to get them from the memorial service for their dad to the graveyard, a red clownish kind of car with a yellow swirling light had to fill in. But Olivia didn't get angry or stamp her foot or fuss at the funeral home staff. Oh, she simply laughed. And her laughter that day turned a dark day into a great memory for her kids and for her. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. True mark of a Christian. And then it was over a year later where Olivia was in the produce section of a food lion there in Gastonia. And she sees this man picking up a couple of potatoes out of the bin in the produce section. They kept bumping into each other in the aisles throughout the store. And later Roger would even tease her and say she was following him around. But you see, earlier that afternoon, he had purchased an old antique bed, what Olivia affectionately called his country junk. But he had this bed still sitting in the back of his truck. He says that she was probably standing a couple of people behind him in the checkout line when he noticed the rain just fall from the sky. He realized that antique bed or country junk was sitting in the back of his truck so he left his groceries right there and ran out to cover up the bed when he returned to pay for his groceries he says the cashier said oh these are already paid for that lady walking out the door right there she paid for your groceries so he ran out the door caught up with her they chatted for a few minutes and they decided that they would make good coffee buddies well, folks, love has no time frame for these coffee buddies. Just four months later, found themselves exchanging wedding vows in a church. And that was over 36 years ago. Roger says that Olivia was the love of his life. A good wife. A patient and kind and understanding wife. A wife whom he respected, loved, and will miss terribly. A wife who he knows loved him dearly. She loved her church, all the churches that she belonged. And she loved this church. Bowling Green, and she says after visiting just one time, long, long time ago, she said she felt so welcomed by the friendly and authentic people here. She said it reminded her of her childhood church, Mizpah Methodist, down in Rome, Georgia. And according to Karen, you couldn't get a better compliment from her mother than that. Yeah, she loved you Bowling Greeners. But she had a keen eye for your weaknesses. Your love of those Clemson Tigers. <laughs> yep. She loved you, but she also loved her Georgia Bulldogs with the fierceness, the fierceness of, well, a bulldog. And every time Clemson beat Georgia, every time, she knew that you were going to show up to church the next day wearing your orange Shirts and ties. So just this past September, when Georgia beat Clemson, she considered donning her own red sweatshirt and her bulldog's cap just for revenge for all your boasting over the years. But she didn't. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Well, she might not have been wearing her bulldog sweatshirt that day, but I sure won't forget her smile. <laughs> and then when Georgia upset Alabama just a couple of weeks ago, the family said she was up in the living room jumping up and down and screaming and loud, said, 
She believes everybody in the neighborhood knew the moment that Georgia beat Bama because of her loud screams. That was just a few days before her death. And I wonder if she thought to herself, you know, life can't get much better than this. Georgia with the championship win, the love, the genuine love of family and friends, a warm church home, her deep faith in God. You know, it might not can get much better than that. You know, she was always known for her quiet and sweet nature outside of Georgia Bulldogs. But she did have enemies. Does this surprise any of you? Yeah, the squirrels who would steal the apples off her apple trees. She wanted to show her grandkids that apples don't come from grocery stores. They come from trees. But those rascally squirrels, they kept stealing the apples from her tree before they'd even ripen. So there was a time or two that she could be found in her backyard wearing her fashionable capris and her garden shoes and toting a BB gun. <laughs> and unfortunately for those squirrels, Olivia was a good shot. I guess she decided that part in Scripture about feeding your enemies didn't pertain to squirrels. Something I heard over and over from many family and friends and even in-laws. Was it, it was very important to Olivia to always be respectful for others. All others, even those who disagreed with her. She never ridiculed them or belittled them. She respected them for their own opinions. She knew how important it is to understand first before bothering with trying to be understood. Her mind sometimes was even expanded by other people's opinions. And on occasion it was changed for the better. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Live peaceably with all. Another of Olivia's marks. If you know Olivia, you know that she delighted in each one of her grandchildren, Kaylin and Ian and David. And she had a special and unique bond with each one of them. And she celebrated their individuality. She doted on her first grandchild, Kaylin. So they could spend hours and hours talking, or Kaylin spent hours and hours talking, and <laughs> Olivia listening. Olivia loved taking her to church, and then on the way home, they would sing, Jesus loved me, all the way. Kaylin says that when she was playing basketball, she always knew when her grandmother was in attendance, her Mimi, because she could hear Olivia's screaming cheers above all the other roars in the gym. Ian remembers a time when they were out in Wyoming and the Mormon missionaries there kept stopping by the house to invite them to come to church. Well, one time when Olivia was there visiting, they came to the door, which turned out to be for their very last visit there. And when they got finished with their spiel, little Ian said, Thank you, but you're wasting your time here. I do not want to go to your church, and I do not want to attend the activities there. So please leave me alone. And then he promptly shut the door. And rather than scolding him, Olivia just burst out laughing. She turned around in disbelief, her eyes wide, and said, That was David Gross. David, she loved babysitting you on Saturdays. She loved packing your special lunch that was identical to hers that you were going to have. And she said she was always amazed that even as a young fellow, even as a little boy, 
You would follow her around the house wanting to help with any chore that she was doing. And she says that her work ethic she saw in you. Keep that. Of Chris, she was never prouder of him than when he spoke at his baptism about his own faith journey, about the joys and sorrows that deepen faith. And you know, I think she was a little bit proud of herself that day too. Instilling her faith into her children was of vital importance to her. And to hear Chris express his understanding of the power of God through both the valleys and the mountain peaks of life was truly a gift to her. With Karen, she enjoyed their strong mother-daughter bond. And although she was very private about a lot of things, she could lessen some of those burdens by confiding in Karen. As many of us know, Olivia's health was not good. She had issues with her eyes and her failing kidneys were always teetering toward dialysis. And she could share those pains and concerns with Karen in a way that she didn't share with a lot of us. She knew that Karen had her strength and her back. With Roger, she liked the adventure of getting back to basics when they decided to buy some farmland off of Lester Road. She was quite handy. Perhaps, after all, she was born a gritty country girl. Roger and Olivia raised animals and various crops of all kinds. They even built a barn with their own hands together. She was gutsy. One time they had purchased a goat, but they only had their Zuziki Jeep to bring the goat home. While Roger's trying to figure all this out, she put that goat in her lap in the car and said, Come on, let's go. And as they were driving through downtown Gastonia, she said, Oh, they were getting all these strange stares of this lady with this goat on her lap. What possibly were those people thinking of her? But here's the best thing not only did she not care, She thought it was hilarious, and she hoped that that vision they got that day of this lady with the goat head hanging out of the Jeep and in her lap, she hoped that vision made those folks' day just a little bit brighter. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. of all the love she had for us, her family and friends, God was the center of her life. And throughout her life, not only did she read the words of Scripture, but she lived that life of a true Christian. Her faith carried her through dark times. And her love of Jesus shone in the love she had and shared with others. Libby Nail, Nail, Livia, however you knew her, you knew she was the epitome of love. Patient and kind, not envious or boastful. And because of her strong relationship with God, Father, Spirit, and Son, her love could bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. And love never ends. Not her love for us and not our love for her. Because of God's love for us, and especially on this day, especially on this day, as we rejoice in his never-failing, never-ending love for Olivia, we know in certainty that life is not ended for Olivia, but real life, abundant life, eternal life, has just begun. Thanks be to God. Amen.
One Sunday years ago as she was leaving worship, Olivia told me that the message that day was meant especially for her. The message was about having so much faith and trust in God that no matter what we were going through, having true faith and trust meant that our prayer to God could be, whatever, Lord, whatever. So let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Olivia's granddaughter, Kaylin, has asked for a time for her to speak today. I'm a 
little tall, so hopefully everyone can hear me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Apparently the name Olivia is derived from Oliva, meaning olive or olive tree, often seen as a symbol of peace. My Mimi was just that peaceful, except for when she was bothered when she didn't want to be. She was beautiful, intelligent, hilarious, kind, selfless, and strong. Her cooking was out of this world. Her baking was even better. I always made sure to pack leggings after a trip with her. She had the voice of an angel, and everyone who met her absolutely adored her. My Mimi was more than my favorite grandma. She was a role model, one of my biggest supporters, and of course, critics. And she was my best friend. I'll forever cherish her humming as she walked throughout the house. Every morning, we'd sit in her bathroom doing makeup and st telling stories. We always watched crime shows together. We'd always give each other grief over our height differences, and I will cherish our grocery trips. And that barely scratches the surface of my memories with her. Mimi, I miss you so much. But I know you're with me every day because I hear you. And I also know that you're on a shore basking in the sunshine right now and get to every day. I'll continue striving to be half the woman you were and fulfilling those promises I made you when we last talked. Thank you. Let us pray. O oh God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for your servant Olivia, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful for the grace you gave her that kindled in her the love of your dear name and enabled her to serve you faithfully. We thank you that for her, death is past and pain ended and that she has now entered the joy you have prepared through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught his disciples to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Olivia has her own message that for you that she wrote for this day and this occasion. For those I love, to those who love me. When I am gone, release me, let me go. I have so many things to see and do. You must not tie yourself to me with tears, but be happy that we had so many years. I gave you my love. You can only guess how much you gave me in happiness. I thank you for the love you each have shown. But now it's time. I traveled on alone. So grieve a while for me, if grieve you must. Then let your grief be comforted by trust. It's only for a while that we must part. So bless the memories that lie within your heart. I won't be far away, for life goes on. So if you need me, call, and I will come. 
Though you can't see me or touch me, I will be near. And if you listen with your heart, you'll hear all of my love around you, soft and clear. And then when you must come this way alone, I'll greet you with a smile and a welcome home. Please stand us and join with us uh, in a hymn, There's a Sweet, Sweet Spirit, found on page 408. <laughs> seated. For thousands of years, God's people have turned to the 23rd Psalm for comfort and peace, a psalm assuring us of God's presence with us, walking alongside us on our journey through life. So now let us receive the comfort and peace of those words today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we can be confident that God has already brought Olivia unto him. So in that confidence, let us now pray. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Olivia Lumpkin Gross Davis. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, 
a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Being assured of God's greatness and promises, being renewed and encouraged by the loving, generous, protective, and quiet spirit of Olivia. Let us leave this place with the peace and comfort that can only be ours through the grace and mercy of God. And now may the peace of God, the peace that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. Please stand and join us in singing Because He Lives, which is an insert.